right, super. Hello, everyone. Uh, greetings from uh, sunny northern Germany, and thanks for tuning in to this episode of uh, Get Together with Get Abstract with me, your host, Gordon Seymour. An organization's ability to learn and translate that learning into action quickly is the ultimate competitive advantage. You may have heard of this quote, stated some 30 years ago by the late Jack Welsh, former CEO of GE, and it still resonates strongly in my mind, some, oh, gosh, a decade after joining Get Abstract as a, a sales representative. Indeed, it seems that this quote even, is even more applicable today as it was then. An equally relevant quote comes from Peter Senge uh, in his highly rated book, The Fifth Discipline the art and practice of the learning organization. Organizations that will truly excel in the future will be those that discover how to tap people's commitment and capacity to learn at all levels of the organization. When this seminal work appeared in 1990, it was well ahead of its time in identifying and describing what a learning organization really is. Today, however, this concept has become a central component of organizational development globally as companies strive to develop a culture of learning. In this episode of Get Together by Get Abstract, entitled How to Develop a Learning Culture, we will explore some tips and good practices that companies can use to permeate learning throughout their operations. And in helping me to do this, I'm joined by my colleague, Maria Alonso, Client Success Manager at Get Abstract. Hi, Maria. Welcome. Lovely to see you. Why don't you kick off by explaining uh, where, where you're calling in from, uh, how you're coping with the current uh, corona lockdown in your part of the world, and perhaps a little bit about your role. Hi, Gordon. It's great to see you, too. and Thank you for having me today. So hi, everyone. My name is Maria, and I am a Customer Success Manager at Get Abstract. I am based in Bogota, in Colombia. So right now we're in complete lockdown due to the pandemic, of course. And um, we will be until the 25th of May. So yeah, difficult times, but all is good, fortunately. And I am working from home like I normally do. So as I said before, I am a customer success manager at Get Abstract, And what we do from our role is we make sure clients get the most out of their Get Abstract experience by supporting them with different initiatives and different strategies um, that can help them overcome challenges and achieve their learning goals. That's super, Maria. And I wish you all the best uh, for the remaining time of your lockdown. So. Okay, let's, um, let's start off by looking at this concept of, of learning culture. It seems to mean different things to different people, Maria. How, how would you go about defining what learning culture means to you? Yeah, well, Gordon, you're right. And uh, to me, a learning culture is a mix of organizational values and practices that help or support employees and organizations to develop knowledge and competence. And, you know, organizations with strong learning cultures inspire continuous learning. And since constant learning elevates an individual in a professional and personal level, it opens opportunities for the company to transform continuously for the better. That's, that's interesting, uh, transform continuously and for the better. Um, that also reminds me of another quote from Peter Senge in his book, where he states, a learning organization is one that is continuously, or continually, excuse me, expanding its capacity to create its future. Today, of course, I guess that creating one future can be interpreted as, as having to adapt in a world where the speed of change is indeed accelerating and continuous disruption threatens the very existence of the organization itself. Okay, so we hear of many global companies that may be defined as learning organizations, Maria, having successfully embraced the culture of learning. The big boys such as SAP, Apple, MasterCard, Google, and, and, and so forth. In your view, Maria, and considering that most of us don't actually work in such large organizations, what are the, what are the advantages of adopting a, a culture of learning within smaller organizations, perhaps? Yeah, definitely, Gordon. So 
I think that creating a learning culture is the best way to make sure that an organization can adapt to a rapidly changing business environment, which is so relevant right now, especially with the current situation we're facing, where we have been forced to adapt to different ways of working and even living. So adapting to change is, the, to me, the most important advantage of having a learning culture, but some other advantages include increased employee satisfaction and decreased turnover, um, increased efficiency, productivity and profit, a developed sense of ownership and accountability, and a culture of knowledge sharing, which is so important to us at Get Abstract. Absolutely. Thanks very much uh, for that listing there, uh, Maria. So there are many advantages to having a, a culture of learning, as you, you've, you've clearly stated. It strikes me that um, in creating such a, a culture, companies must really be prepared to radically change managerial thinking and, and probably more importantly, perhaps management practices, practices that actually help to enable um, an open and growth mindset uh, and one that embraces knowledge sharing and collaboration, for example. So how do companies actually go about this transition? Yeah, that's correct, Gordon. And, you know, um, companies must be prepared to embrace change in order to develop a true learning culture. So I wanted to mention five steps I took from the abstract of the white paper, seven steps to creating a lasting learning culture by Horace McCormick. Um, and these steps can be used to help achieve this. So. The abstract talks about seven steps, but I've selected five that I think are the most relevant to talk to you today. So the first cool. step, and this is the one that I like the most, is it is all about rethinking the traditional learning and development approach. So you know, most companies spend a big part of their learning budgets on formal training, and this type of training often fails because it discourages trial and error. So this type of training can also take up a lot of months to develop and the need for it for that specific training may change or pass entirely. So training should come as needed when needed and in the flow of work. And an ideal scenario to give you an example would be when someone is working and needs information on a specific topic. So this person should be able to stop what they're doing, um, go find the content or the information they're looking for, learn, take it in, and then go back to work and apply it to what they're doing. Because to remember what you learn people and workers must use it on the job and most importantly in the context of their real work. It is also ideal for them to do this with their colleagues. Uh, and you know, Gordon, talking about rethinking the traditional learning and development approach, it is essential to highlight the importance of the role that technology plays here because organizations should use learning technology as an enabler of the learning culture and not a driver. Uh, and this is a misconception. And, you know, the best learning technologies, the tools and the platforms that are available won't transform your traditional learning organization into a modern learning culture. It is important if you want to achieve this to address uh, cultural and change initiatives first and then support self-directed learning culture with the technology. Oh, that's great. So, so what I'm hearing is that encouraging an atmosphere of, of, of open communication and, and collaboration between people and, and shared working between work colleagues is really important if, if an organization is going to quickly adapt to changing business environments. Um, and what, what, what I'm also hearing is that instead of pushing formal training to employees, company must give them the tools in order for them to actually start pulling, finding and pulling learning content from available systems, resources, uh, and, and of course, each other. Yeah, exactly, Gordon. And this takes us to step number two, actually, um, which is to encourage employees to develop new skills besides acquiring knowledge. So this is important because global business demands emotional and cultural intelligence. So it is very important that we promote diversity and uh, we foster an atmosphere 
in which all employees feel welcome. So offering different topics to learn from helps people to find the content they weren't even looking for in the first place, but it opens up an opportunity to learn about something new. And this is actually something that I see happening with GitAbstract a lot, you know. Um, users access the platform searching for something specific, maybe an abstract that their boss or later recommended. Um, and along the way, they stumble upon something that is not really related to what they were searching for in the first place, but it interests them. So they end up learning something new. That's great. So companies, companies must really accept that not all learning in the flow of work that we hear so much about may be associated with solving an immediate problem at work. But the concept of continuous learning, learning through curiosity and desire for additional knowledge is something that uh, should be accepted and indeed encouraged. I guess that must be reflected in complete transparency and a clear set of values from the top uh, in order to make such things happen. Quite a challenge for some organizations that I, I think would need to move from a, what, a command and control style of leadership to one embracing employee inclusion, openness, honesty, and, and trust, of course. I can imagine, Maria, that, that, a, that a change in managerial attitudes and behaviors is needed here, um, you know, in some cases, to enable this transition to happen then. Absolutely. And uh, Gordon, you know, the, the third step that I'm going to mention is actually about obtaining senior executive buy-in. You know, this is a fundamental step because senior managers must lead by example. Um, and they should also incorporate learning in their employees' goals and acknowledge when team members have mastered new skills. This is very important. Um, so yeah, and uh, talking about step four now, which is related to, to step three, this is about encouraging also the rapid sharing of knowledge and learning. And this is about promoting collaboration and implementing learning systems that make it easy for employees to share information. So implementing coaching and mentoring programs to boost motivation and help staff put new um, knowledge into practice. That is very important. And at Get Abstract, we love to promote knowledge sharing. Um, I always talk about this with my clients and the way that we structure the abstracts is easy to share. So yeah, this is it, it's really important to encourage this. Um, and the last step, step number five, is about celebrating failures and understanding that a learning mindset is a growth mindset. So. It is important to emphasize and reiterate that mistakes are super valuable learning opportunities. And these encourage people to, to take risks and we want people to be risk takers, right? So this also motivates employees to become lifelong learners and to easily adapt to change, which is one of our main goals with the learning culture. Absolutely. Thanks, Maria. Five, five really interesting steps that you've mentioned there um, for in, that, in that list. So if anyone is listening and, and thinking about how they can start on the route to establishing a learning culture in, in, their, in their teams, perhaps, Maria, what would be two or three good practices uh, that they could start with? Well, I can think of three best practices. <laughs> Um, the first one, and to me, the most important one would be to, to start small. Don't try to do everything at once. To start with, pick a topic that is relevant for your team and create learning spaces around it. I think that creating a climate that promotes critical thinking is particularly important, especially if you're looking for your team to produce something innovative. Um, you know, Gordon, what we do in our monthly team meeting is we read an abstract before the meeting, we prepare it, and then during the first 10 minutes of the meeting, we discuss about it. And I think this is great because you get to see different points of view and insights from your teammates. And it's also interesting to, to discuss about a topic that is relevant to your team. So that would be the step number one for me. The, first best practice cool. to start small. Um, 
Second one that I can think of is to lead by example. And here I mean, and this is for the leaders, obviously. So, you know, a driver of employee learning is what you as a manager or leader actually do. So your behaviors have a strong influence on the behavior and the performance of your team. So if you want to nurture your team's curiosity or unlock learning in your organization, you should definitely practice what you preach. And yeah, this is a very important one for me. Um, and the third one would be, and this comes from an abstract that I really want. This is, understand that as a leader, you are managing minds instead of managing hands. Uh, and this comes from, from the past where uh, leaders were managing labor, so they were managing hands, but now we're in the knowledge times. And you need to understand that as a leader, you should support employees um, and self-directed learning with communications and emotional intelligence skills. And you must give workers the time, the space, and the tools, uh, so including technology and platforms, uh, to practice uh, so that they can join to take command of their own development and careers. And as a leader, you should provide curated learning content and coaching where necessary and work with each employee on their own continuous learning goals. So just to talk about them again, start small, lead by example, and understand that you're managing minds instead of managing hands. Three great uh, tips uh, for everyone there, Maria. Thanks very much uh, for that. No need to elaborate on those great points that you've just made. And I note uh, that you made reference from the book Minds at Work, Managing for Success in the Knowledge Economy. And I have the, uh, the Get Abstract summary here. Um, I can certainly recommend to our viewers uh, to, uh, to, to, to buy this book, or, or why not? take a trip to getabstract.com. Check out our subscription plans and get further insights from this really great title. Together, of course, with Peter Senge's The Fifth Discipline. Thank you, Maria, for joining me for today's Get Abstract uh, Get Together. It's been really fun. I've thoroughly enjoyed it. Some super tips for anyone starting the journey towards creating a learning culture in their team or their company. And a big thank you to everyone uh, from me for watching. Thank you, Gordon. And thank you everyone for watching. Stay safe, everyone. Bye for now. Extraordinary challenges require extraordinary responses from thought leaders, company executives, and employees. As the coronavirus pandemic unfolds and businesses scramble to adapt to escalating containment efforts, Get Abstract is here to help organizations navigate this crisis wisely and professionally. For over 20 years, we've been committed to providing relevant knowledge from reliable sources to help people make better decisions in their personal and professional lives. In line with our mission to empower decision makers with relevant knowledge from trusted sources, we are proud to offer businesses free access to our full library until May 18. Embark on a no-strings-attached knowledge journey with Get Abstract. Sign up today.